and welcome today to Teacher of the Truth, where we dig into God's Word and get into some real neat things. And today, what I want to talk to you about is a uh, Pentecostal term, which I am Pentecostal, and it's mostly used in Pentecostal realms called pleading the blood of Jesus. And what does that actually mean? So, we're going to look at some few stuff, but let's uh, pray and ask God to be with us today. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with us in this lesson. We ask that you uh, guide my mind and help me be able to teach your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, the Passover in the Old Testament scriptures is the focal point of understanding the power of the blood. All sacrifice that proceeds after that in the Masonic system is founded on this principle through the blood of sacrifice that there is deliverance, protection, and God's pro provided future. This mighty forecasting pictures a fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. So, cleaning the blood of Jesus. When we're talking about Pleading the blood of Jesus, we are not talking about begging. Pleading the blood should not be be considered as a desperation or a desperation exercise. God has not called us to come begging before Him. Many of us were raised in an environment where we heard the words "Father God, we come under the blood of Jesus." Our Lord, we cover this matter with the blood of Jesus. Even before we understood it, we believe the power in the power of the blood, because we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and that the cross was an instrument of global redemption, which broke the power of hell. Cleaning the blood of Jesus is not a superstitious application of a magic formula of words, whether a spiritual, dramatic, is being applied. The power of the blood of Jesus is greater than both the energy of our own humanity and that of our own adversary. The power that saves is also the power that releases, delivers, and neutralizes the in enterprises of hell and the weaknesses of flesh. The appropriation of the power of the blood is taught in sensations and intended for every believer in Christ to know, to understand, and to employ. And that's what I want to get to you. Because some people today in our system think that we have to have the pastor there or we have to have somebody high up in the church to come and anoint my house. Where, whether the fact is that you have just as much power as the pastor has. And it's because of the blood of Jesus. Because he's going to you use the blood of Jesus to anoint the house and to get rid of demons and do whatever you want him to do. But the blood of Jesus is our key. And it's important that we understand the reason for the words we use so they do not become formulas. Otherwise, one of two things will happen. Either that what we say becomes superstition, exercise, in which we are dependent on the words, whether on the understanding that gives the words the power, or some people will not use the words related to the blood of Jesus because they do not understand the spiritual dynamic, leaving them without the resources they need. So, where does this uh, using the blood comes from? It actually comes from the Old Testament, where uh, talking about Moses, and uh, I'm talking about that. So most of us are familiar with the Old Testament story of Israel's deliverance from the last plague of Egypt in which the firstborn of every family was doomed to die. The Israelites were instructed by God to place the blood of the lamb over the doorpost and lentils so that the plague of his judgments would pass over their houses. Now that the blood shall be the sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike your land of Egypt. So this day shall be to you a memorial, 
and you shall keep a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. And that is found in Exodus chapter 12, verses 13 through 14. God also entrusted and instructed his people to memor memorialize and celebrate the Passover in generations to come. As believers in Jesus Christ, we can look for we can look at four things which took place in that ancient event that has been un unmistakable a direct application to us today. Number one, the blood provides protection. First, the blood provides protection. With regards to plagues, God was not dealing with friendliality but redemptively but redemptively. He was seeking to bring two million people out of slavery. The Lord's directive to take a lamb into the house for four days, turning it into a beloved pet of the family before it was slain, was laden with emotions. God was teaching a lesson there is a high and painful price in order for a redemption to take place. As much affection as the family had for the lamb, nothing compares to the heart of God who loves the world. He saved his only begotten son. Still, this act, which required by God of his people, demonstrated more than the casual or indifferent attitude that can be so characteristic of human beings. Number two, the blood provides a mean of deliverance. By the blood of the Lamb, there came the breaking of the yoke of Pharaoh's strength to retain them, and God's covenant people were released from bondage literally overnight. It was a miracle by every measure, and to become the cent central point of worship to this day in the Jewish tradition. Every time you and I come to the Lord's table, we are celebrating in Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the same thing that the Passover lamb provided, protection and deliverance. Number three, the blood provides the promise of a new day. The Lord makes the Passover an important beginning point. The, this month shall be a beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you, Exodus 12, 2 says. Our children will ask about it. It relates to the future generations. He's saying that what happens through this blood is going to open the doors to a new day for you. And like Israel, you might be right now at what seems to be at the end of your own hope and strength. But through the power of the blood, there comes the promise to you. Just as it came to Israel so long ago, the, the, this will be the beginning of days to you. In addition to protection and deliverance, there's fresh hope in the blood. So take hold of that hope. There's somebody watching that needs a new day in their life. And when that new day comes is when you surrender your life to Jesus and you can start with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Number four, the blood provides a witness. As the blood was put over the door, it is a testimony that there was a place of safety for anybody who wanted to come in from out of the circle of death. The record of scripture is that there is some, some Egyptians who did, seeing the power of God, who had already visited fierce judgments upon their land. They believed that he was the God of all. They fled into the Jewish households. How is the blood, as it is expressed in your home, a witness? Is there a different method in atmospheres in your home that of the world? I'm not talking about religious pictures on the wall, or, but something that people can sense the spirit of the living God because the blood of Jesus covers your household. It provides a witness and invites them out of the circle of death into his safety. And that's what every Christian home should be. Because what are we, do, what, what are we called to do? To be believers, we are called to love. And when they feel that love, they know that God is here. Because what is it? God is love. For Israel, 
there was a risk of putting the blood over the outside of the doors. Just imagine what the mockers might have said. Today, our world has no more value than Pharaoh. He for, had for the things that fill God's people with hope, faith, and release unto life. We're not a people who simply make re uh, recitations of creeds. We are a people who have tasted of a power. And the power having come into our lives is a uh, penetrate in our home. It is the power of the blood that protects, that delivers, that opens a new day, and that becomes a witness and an invitation to others. There is no circumstance in our life which the blood of Jesus isn't a key of God releasing, protecting. Resolving power, whether it's removing the potential of confusion, overcoming the impact of rebellion, breaking the torment of fear or shame of the past. When we plead the blood, we are doing so in the understanding sense that when the fire, fire power from the supernatural on the basics of the body of evidence that through the blood of Jesus Christ, all hell has been broken in its power, all sin is neutralized, the power of death overwhelmed, and every human need paid for once and for all. So let me pray for you as we close out today, and I thank you for watching, and I hope this helps somebody out there today. Father God, we thank you for this teaching today. I hope it helped someone out there watching, and if it has, let you tug at their heart and convict them to become a Christian for you. And if you haven't become a Christian, uh, say this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. I confess my sins to you right now. And I claim that you, Jesus, are the Son of God. And that on the third day you were raised again. And by claiming that, you are a born again believer. And if you have done that so today, would you please leave a comment in the section below or email me at teacherofhistruth at gmail.com and I'll help you become a new Christian in your daily walk. Thank you and God bless and tune in for the next uh, show.